What if I told you that not all cars are created equal, that some are so horrendous, they belong in the automotive hall of shame? Now we're not talking about cars that merely underperform or have a few design flaws. No, we're delving into the deep end of the pool, where the water is murky with vehicles that are notorious for their catastrophic failures. Cars so bad, they've become legends in their own right, infamous for their disastrous shortcomings. You see, what makes a car the worst is a blend of many factors. It's not just about the aesthetics, though let's be honest, some of these cars are a sight for sore eyes. But beyond that, it's about functionality, reliability, and performance. It's about how a car feels when you're behind the wheel and how it responds when you're cruising down the highway. But there's more to it than that. It's also about the time and context in which these cars were released. Many of these automobiles were born out of a misguided attempt to chase trends or to cut corners in production. They were released to a market that didn't want them or couldn't trust them. And so, they've earned their place in the annals of automotive history, not as shining examples of innovation and design, but as stark reminders of what not to do when creating a vehicle. So buckle up, because we're about to dive into the top 10 worst cars ever made. Kicking off our countdown at number 10, we have the Chrysler Crossfire. Now, this car might have seemed like a good idea on paper, but in reality, it was anything but. One of the main problems with the Crossfire was its performance. Despite its sporty looks, it failed to deliver on the road. The handling was uninspired and the power underwhelming. In terms of market relevance, the Crossfire struggled to find its place. It wasn't luxurious enough to compete with high-end sports cars, yet it was too expensive for the average consumer looking for a fun, sporty ride. It was stuck in a sort of automotive no-man's land. And then there was the design. Some people might have found it appealing, but many felt it was overdone. The Crossfire tried to blend modern and retro elements but the result was a car that looked confused about its own identity. In the end, the Chrysler Crossfire was a car that promised much but delivered little. It was a car that was out of touch with what the market wanted and needed. And that, my friends, is why the Chrysler Crossfire takes the tenth spot. At number nine, we have not one but three disasters. The Hummer H1, H2, and H3. These models, while impressive in their sheer size and robustness, have garnered a notorious reputation in the automotive world. Their excessive size made them a nightmare to park, while their fuel efficiency, or rather inefficiency, made them a burden on the wallet. And let's not forget the impracticality of these vehicles for everyday use. Sure, they might be great for off-roading or for making a statement, but when it comes to the daily commute or a quick trip to the grocery store, they're more of a hassle than they're worth. They're over-the-top design, combined with their lackluster performance and impracticality, make them more of a spectacle than a practical vehicle. These Hummers are more bummer than anything else, landing them at number nine. Coming in at number eight, we have the Dodge Caliber. This compact car, produced from 2007 to 2012, was meant to be a replacement for the Dodge Neon. However, it ended up being a rather disappointing successor. The Dodge Caliber was criticized for its lackluster performance. It was powered by a range of four-cylinder engines, none of which provided the punch or the fuel economy one would expect from a vehicle in this class. The ride quality was also less than stellar, with many reviewers noting its harshness and lack of refinement. But the performance wasn't the only issue. The caliber also suffered from what can only be described as an uninspiring design. It was a strange mix of a hatchback and an SUV, with a boxy shape that failed to excite the eye. The interior didn't fare much better with a low quality feel and a lack of comfortable or high-tech features. And that's why the Dodge Caliber is our number eight on the worst cars list. At number seven, we have a car that tarnished a legendary name, the Ford Mustang II. Now, when you hear the name Mustang, you're likely to imagine a sleek, powerful machine, a symbol of freedom and the open road. But the Ford Mustang II, well, let's just say it didn't quite live up to the legacy. Released in the mid seventies, this vehicle was supposed to be a more economical, compact version of its predecessor. But what we got was a car that felt cheap and underwhelming. The performance was lackluster, to say the least. It seemed as if all the power and thrill associated with the Mustang name had been sucked out and replaced with mediocrity. 
the build quality was another issue. It was clear that corners had been cut to save costs, and the result was a car that felt flimsy and poorly put together. This wasn't the Mustang people knew and loved. And then, there was the damage it did to the Mustang brand. It took years for the Mustang to shake off the negative image created by the Mustang II and regain its rightful place as an icon of American automotive design. This disappointing sequel lands the Ford Mustang II at number seven. At number six, we have a car that was once beloved, but fell from grace, the VW Beetle. Despite its iconic compact design that charmed the world in the mid 20th century, the Beetle was not without its shortcomings. It was a car that prioritized style over performance, and this became glaringly apparent as the automotive industry advanced. Its sluggish performance was a major detraction. The Beetle's air-cooled rear-mounted engine struggled to compete with the power and agility offered by its more modern counterparts. Safety was another sticking point. The Beetle's lack of structural rigidity and front crumple zones meant that it didn't fare well in crash tests earning it a reputation as a potential hazard on the road. Furthermore, the Beetle's design, once its biggest selling point, began to feel outdated as the years rolled by. The automotive world was evolving, and the Beetle's once novel shape couldn't keep up with the sleek aerodynamic designs that started to dominate the market. And that's why the VDW Beetle buzzes in at number six. Crashing into number five, we have the Chevrolet Vega. The Chevrolet Vega, introduced by General Motors in 1970 and produced until 1977, is often cited as one of the worst cars ever made due to a combination of design flaws, reliability issues, and poor corporate decision-making. Here are several reasons why the Vega has earned such a notorious reputation. 1. Rust Issues One of the Vega's most infamous problems was its susceptibility to rust. The car's body was prone to rusting so quickly that some vehicles began to corrode within a year of purchase, particularly in climates where road salt was used in winter. This was partly due to inadequate rust proofing and the extensive use of sheet metal that was not sufficiently protected against corrosion. Two, engine reliability problems. The Vega's aluminum engine was innovative for its time but led to numerous issues. Problems with the engine included excessive oil consumption, overheating, and in many cases, early failure. The aluminum cylinder block without cylinder liners tended to warp from overheating, leading to blown head gaskets and other serious issues. Three, build quality and quality control issues. General Motors pushed the Vega through production at an unprecedented pace, leading to widespread quality control problems. Vehicles were often delivered with significant issues right from the factory, ranging from minor cosmetic defects to major mechanical failures. The assembly process itself, particularly at the Lordstown, Ohio plant, was marked by labor disputes and quality control issues, exacerbating the problems with the car's construction and reliability. Four, performance and handling. While the Vega was initially praised for its handling compared to other American subcompacts of the time, its performance was considered lackluster especially as the engine problems became more widely known. The car's performance did not live up to the expectations set by its sporty appearance. Five, damage to reputation. The multitude of problems with the Vega significantly damaged Chevrolet's and General Motors' reputations. Despite initial high sales and several awards when it was first released, the car's legacy is marred by its failures, leading to a loss of customer trust that took years to rebuild. The Chevrolet Vega's story serves as a cautionary tale about rushing a product to market without adequate testing and quality control, and the long-term damage that can be done to a brand's reputation by failing to address significant design and manufacturing issues. While it was an ambitious project for GM, aiming to introduce innovative manufacturing and engine technologies, the execution fell short in many areas, cementing the Vega's place in automotive history as one of the worst cars ever made. By rushing a product to market without adequate testing and quality control, lands the Chevrolet Vega at number five. At number four, we have a car that's as exciting as watching paint dry, the Toyota Corolla Cross. The Corolla Cross is the automotive equivalent of your favorite beige sweater. It's comfortable, it's reliable, but it's not going to turn any heads at the party. Born from a lineage of functionality over flair, 
The Corolla Cross seems to have taken this mantra to heart. It's as if Toyota took the concept of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it a little too seriously. Yes, it gets you from point A to point B. Yes, it ticks all the boxes for safety and fuel efficiency. But where's the thrill? Where's the drive that ignites passion in car enthusiasts? It's as if the Corolla Cross is content with being the wallflower of the automotive world, never striving for that standing ovation, but always settling for polite applause. And that's why the Toyota Corolla Cross lands at number four. At number three, we have a car that proves even the best can stumble, the BMW XM. This luxury SUV has been a hot topic among car enthusiasts, and not for the right reasons. Its bold, controversial design has left many scratching their heads, questioning how such an esteemed brand could stray so far from their iconic aesthetic. But the issues with the XM don't stop at appearance. Performance has also been a sticking point. Despite the high expectations set by BMW's reputation, the XM fails to deliver, struggling with an underwhelming driving experience that doesn't quite match its luxury price tag. And speaking of price, the XM's hefty cost simply amplifies its shortcomings. With so many other options in the luxury SUV market, it's hard to justify the XM's high price given its controversial design and subpar performance. And that's why the BMW XM takes our bronze medal of shame. At number two, we have a car that's as ugly as it is disappointing, the Pontiac Aztec. This vehicular monstrosity is a standout example of how not to design a car. With its awkward angles and mismatched features, the Aztec's aesthetic is a painful reminder that not all experiments are successful. But the Pontiac Aztec's problems go beyond its ghastly exterior. Under the hood, the Aztec failed to impress. Its subpar performance, lackluster handling and questionable reliability left much to be desired. It was a car that promised adventure and delivered mediocrity. And then there's the matter of market appeal, or rather, the lack thereof. The Aztec was a car without a clear target audience. It tried to be everything, a minivan, a camper, a sports utility vehicle, and ended up appealing to no one. Its confused identity and failed promises led to its downfall, making it a commercial flop and earning it a spot in the annals of automotive infamy. And that's why the Pontiac Aztec is our runner-up in this hall of shame. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the worst car ever made. Crashing into number one, we have the Ford Pinto. A car that, unfortunately, is remembered more for its safety failures than for its accomplishments. The compact American classic was introduced in the early 70s as Ford's response to the rising popularity of small, fuel-efficient imports. However, it was the Pinto's notorious fuel tank design that would seal its fate. Positioned at the rear of the car, the fuel tank was vulnerable to rupturing during rear-end collisions, leading to deadly fires. This design flaw was no small oversight, and it resulted in numerous lawsuits and a massive recall. Crisis, tarnishing Ford's reputation for years to come. The car was eventually discontinued in the early 80s, but its legacy as one of the worst cars ever made lives on. This explosive disaster lands the Ford Pinto at number one. While there were certainly other cars with poor reliability, design flaws, or performance issues, the Ford Pinto's reputation as one of the worst cars ever made is largely due to the ethical implications of its safety issues and the corporate decision-making process that was perceived to have prioritized profits over human lives. The Pinto case remains a frequently cited example in discussions about business ethics, corporate responsibility, and auto safety regulation. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more intriguing content like this.